Good kitten internet, and welcome back to Archer Forest 3, uh, or, mm, sorry, I mean, uh, Bendel Hearts, for the sake of Saturn. Um, so it's been a week since I've recorded one of these, sorry about that. Been a busy week, but let's get back into Vandal Hearts. Uh, so we are going off to Ports Harbor. That sounds like a normal name. We need to take a ship to, t uh, I've already messed up speaking. We need to find a ship to take us to Gilbaris Island. Let's go to the tavern and ask around. Hmm, strange. Last time I was here, this was a lively and bustling port city. I'm not using the right voice for Clint. Let me try that again. Last time I was here, this was a lively and bustling port city. So, oh, we have a new shop. So, we're going to shop things up. So, we don't have any new weapons, it looks like. Not actually new. No. We haven't actually checked Kira, although it looks like Kira has the same weapon, uh, same stuff as Diego. Probably gonna need. Yep. Okay. So, these haven't been helpful at all. Alright, everybody even has an herb. Although, we have the extra money, I would like... Uh, never mind, they already have magic oil, so nope. Shop's useless. Well, I suppose we're going to the tavern. Let's talk to the innkeeper. Looking for a ship? I don't think you'll have much luck. The pirate Hassan has been prowling the, this area recently. The whole port's deserted with a not a single ship coming in or going out. A relative of mine lives on Gilbaris Island, but all of contact's been cut off because of that damned pirate. I hope he's okay. There's old talk of a monster hiding in the sand dune near town. Pirates in the sea and monsters in the sand. This whole place is doomed. Wait, wait a moment. There's still a ship in the harbor. Uh, nah, forget about it. He never do it. Tell me, who owns that ship? Well, his name is Grog Drinkwater. Oh, the thematic naming of this game. If only it didn't bonk you on the head with references to things. He was a great salt sailor once, but his younger brother was killed by Hassan the pirate. He hasn't been the same since. All he does is drown his sorrow in booze. Hmm. Let's go have a talk with this grog fellow. He totally seems like the type that should join us. Oh, now we can go to Grog's house. That's right. It's a location in Ports Harbor. I'm pretty sure Ports Harbor is a mistranslation of literally supposed to be, um, uh, Ishtaria's Harbor or something like that. Or Ishtaria's Port, or just the name of the town being Ports Harbor is just weird. Loading train. With Clint on it. Man, he is just two-fisting the ale. Excuse me? Anybody home? I'm coming in anyway because, you know, nobody's responded. Welcome to the reason why this game is rated M. For mentions of an alcoholic. Oh man, this place stinks of wine. Bust into my place and then mouth off? Sorry, we knocked, but no one answered. That's still not a good reason to bust into somebody's house, but, you know, whatever. Stupid punks! I didn't answer because I didn't want to be bothered. What the hell is my accent for Grog? Well, we're here anyway. We want to hire you and your ship to take us to Gilbaris Island. Of course, we will pay you handsome. Gilbaris Island? Even you strangers must have heard of the rumors of Hassan the Pirate. 
If you don't want to die, you'll forget about going there. We're not leaving until you take us. No, really. We're still not leaving until you take us. I think Ash's superpower is just being that damn stubborn. Come on already. We'll never make it out there. We can protect you from those sea dogs. All right, fine. I'll make a deal with you. You guys are strong enough to defeat the monster living in the sand dunes outside of town? I'll think about it. All right. That's fine with me. Ash, you don't even know what the heck it is. Just walks out while Diego's still standing there. I love it. Get your full selves killed. Glug, 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 glug. Glug, 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 glug. Like I said, two-fisting the alcohol bottles, not a good sign. All right, we're going to leave town. Now we're heading off to the Death Dunes. I love the names of this game so much. That one is Diego. Pretty sure it's Diego. Oh, the sand is killing my flat feet. Oh, do you not take along? Uh, by the way, what kind of monster is it? Huh? There's something moving under the sand. I think this is an interesting battle, personally. Oh no, it's a bug. I detest bugs. By the way, Huxley complaining is a running joke throughout the entire game. Just an FYI. So, we need to kill the head. That is our objective. That's it. There's no other objective here. I'm going to double check really fast to see if there's any... Um, whatchamacallit, um, secret things here. I don't think there is in this case. I have way too many tabs open. Do -do -do -do. Nope, there is nothing here. So, for reference, Take a look at the monsters. So we've got Death Ant Arm, which is level one. Level one with 13 hit points. We're not exactly talking about something strong here. There are six of them. And then there's the Death Ant Head, which is level 10 and significantly stronger than us. This is our first boss battle, by the way. Um, fun thing about this battle, the Ant Arms respawn. So if I remember correctly, and I think the walkthrough actually mentioned it, yep. So, in this game, there will be a maximum of six arms at the start of round. Four will spawn every round. But there's it's an infinite spawn. So, in other words, if I kill all six arms in one round, the next round, four more will appear. If I instead leave the arms alone, and there's six, six arms at the end of round, zero will appear. So, you generally want to ignore the arms, except the arms are going to attack you, and you're going to counterattack them. Because that's the way Vandal Hearts works, is that you can't prevent counterattacks. Unless if you're dead, of course. Or paralyzed. I think it's just dead or paralyzed. So, we're still going to have to deal with the arms. The other thing we're going to have to deal with... is the terrain. You will notice that we have a bit of a height problem here. Also, there's a graphical glitch for that tree up there. Uh, you can see my mouse, right? Yeah. Uh, this tree up here, uh, you can just barely see my mouse, but it's showing through the terrain, which is definitely not supposed to happen. Um, but basically, we've got a bit of a height problem, and you will notice that the Death Ant Head is on the top. Other thing that you will notice is that the Death Ant Head movement range is pretty dang huge. Um... 
it doesn't quite move the way you expect it to. So rather than just the head moving down here, what it does is that it buries itself in the sand and reappears here. Which means one, you can't block its movement at all, and two, the height changes during the battle. This is definitely not something that is possible in Shining Force 2. This is a brand new type of mechanic. And to the best of my knowledge, I actually don't know of any strategy RPG that does something like this. It's a very dynamic game, if I do say so myself. So you'll notice that they only have 13 hit points and are not exactly very strong. You'll also notice they didn't give any XP, at least not to Ash. Uh, Ash is level nine, so there's a pretty large difference in there. Um, but I'm pretty sure they just don't give XP at all. So you cannot use this battle to grind. Also, they are fist type, which means that archers are strong or are weak against them as are clerics. You're going to start seeing me cast the spell that you're going to hear a whole bunch this game, and that is Mystic Shield. Oh, it's a bit of an audio lag. So Mystic Shield increases my defense temporarily. I think it even shows up in there just as a plus, yeah. I don't actually know what the plus indicates. I want to say it's plus 50% defense, but I'm not entirely sure. So yes, I am in fact going after the arms. That's because they're going to attack me anyway, which means they're going to die anyway. The rest of them can't, or that's the only other one that can even reach me, which Diego is going to handle. Uh, if he can reach. I actually don't know if he can reach. Nope. Oh, this is the only arm that's going to be able to reach me? Yeah. We'll attack Ash, most likely. Potentially Eli. and I. Uh, honestly, I want Eli and I more protected than Ash. Or than Diego. might not actually be a bad battle to have zoom set to distant. So, um, Mystic Shield, I want to talk about that. You'll notice the spawn happens at start of round, not end of round, but they spawn in the corners. Ooh, that was a slowdown. Uh, so the real game also slows down, or the, like, playing on a PlayStation 1, that also has a slowdown there. I wasn't sure if that was going to be a part of the game engine or not. So it's important for us to not be in the corners, because otherwise we're going to be attacked by multiple ants a turn. I notice that it's only doing 12 damage, but that adds up pretty fast, especially when there's a boss ant that's going to attack Ash. But you see what I mean by the terrain's going to be changing a whole bunch? On the plus side, Ash is in healing range. Ow! But I only do 12 damage to that because it's field type. Field type, as we remember, those arms won't stop coming. They won't stop coming and they won't stop. Anyway, uh, we have to attack its main body. Thanks, Captain. All right. So one thing that I didn't mention is that this is shield variety, which means that it's weak against magic. Dark Star, we get to see these even more often. Dark Star is going to be a somewhat common spell as well, but I want to talk about Mystic Shield. Um, Mystic Shield is an exploit in this game. Technically, you can do any type of buff spell as an exploit. I had mentioned before that you gain XP based off of your level differential between you and the target where you always get some amount of XP for something, hitting something at the same level, more XP for hitting something at a higher level, less XP for hitting something at a lower level. So by casting Mystic Shield, Huxley, who is level eight, if I cast Mystic Shield on Ash, which I'm going to do, by the way, um, then Huxley is going to gain more XP 
from casting it on Ash than he did by casting it on himself. Mystic Shield and other healing spells is the way that healers will never fall behind in this game. Because if I ever have a healer that somehow is five levels below somebody else, I can just have them cast Mystic Shield once, and they will level up twice. I am not joking. They will gain 200 and something XP from that level differential. Um, this is also how an exploit happens in the game, for reference. And I'll talk about the exploit a little bit more closer to the actual time I'm doing it. Or, I'm, I'm not actually going to be exploiting it this game, I should mention. Um, it makes the game too easy. I think I can reach. So, now you'll see Mystic Shield cast on Ash. And you'll notice Huxley gained 33 XP. I think he gained like 20 XP before when he cast it on himself. Very light yourself. We'll fully heal. So the main thing we're going to have to worry about in this battle is the fact that that ant head is nasty and there's a bunch of other ants in the way. So we're going to be picking off the arms as we can so we don't get overwhelmed. And again, the slowdowns are in the PlayStation 1 version of the game too. This is definitely not the fault of the emulator. Clint, you can't quite reach back, unfortunately, but you can reach side. Better than nothing. Yeah. Um, well, you'll notice, Clint can now be one-shotted. Yeah, I should heal Clint. Let's try to minimize the amount of casualties in this game. Although, again, I'm pretty sure it's impossible to... Well, no, it's not impossible to completely eliminate them. I have done that before. But I'm not going to try, because otherwise this game's going to take forever. So we only killed a couple of arms this turn. Only a couple is going to spawn. I think it's cheap. problem is that they're all going to go after Clint and Ash. It's possible that Clint will die this turn, even though he was fully healed at the start of last turn. Or at the end of last turn. He's okay right now, as long as he doesn't get critted. Which, I, uh, crits don't happen very often in this game, if I remember right, if they do at all. I'm not sure if this game has crits. Oh no, they're going after Ninja Master Hux. Wow. Yes, even Huxley with the weakest weapon he can possibly equip can still one-shot these things. This will become a problem later on, by the way. Okay, good. You're attacking Ash still. Ash can heal himself, so I'm not as concerned about him. Also, Ash can do more damage. But I'd rather have everybody else start leveling up a little more. Okay, how are you doing on XP, Ash? You're at 48, you're at 66, you're at 77. It would be nice if I can get Diego up to 9 at least. But before I do anything, I'm going to save, because I think this is going to be a very short battle. So there's no reason to drag it out. I'm not getting XP from anyone other than Huxley and Ash. And whoever's attacking the head, of course. Yes, I know Diego's gonna be a counterattack. I don't think that'll kill him. Yeah, it's gonna be dead. Which means... Healing! On the character who's highest level, so I can get more XP on Huxley. I, I've i gotta 
optimize XP. That's just what I do. All right, now Huxley's level nine. Uh, Diego's unfortunately eight XP off of level nine. So I think I should just have Eli finish this thing off. Ooh, I have Spellbind now. So Spellbind is the spell you're gonna see Eli cast a whole heck of a lot coming up soon. What it does is it paralyzes a target. That's it, that's all it does is it paralyzes them. They no longer get actions until they are unparalyzed, which I believe lasts, I think it lasts for two rounds? The reason why that is important is going to come up a little bit later. And once you see it in action, you will fully understand why that is probably the most common spell ever cast by Eli. But I'm gonna dark star this thing to death. And this is gonna be less than 25 minutes long, wow. You win! See, you don't even get money for the others, so there's no reason to try to drag it out other than if I really wanted to try and power level Huxley at this point, which is not the worst idea, but I don't really want to. Um, so what you could do is that you would constantly power level Huxley by doing this, and then, I'll, I'll do that in a moment. Um, after you get Huxley up as much as you can, you start having other characters use MP recovery items on Huxley, like Mage Oil. Um, what that does is, because you're using an item on another target, you're going to gain XP based off of your level differential, which will level you up, while giving Huxley enough MP to cast um, Mystic Shield two more times. Every time. So I could just sit there and have Ash and Huxley power level each other. It's not gonna happen. I don't want to do that in this game. It makes the game trivial after a certain point. And I'll explain more later. I thought you guys were never gonna really do it. That means you'll take us now, right? Let me let me sleep on it, okay? Sleep on it? You promised! Hold on. We'll accept your answer tomorrow. But uh, let me just say one thing. Whoever it is you lost, drinking won't work. Remember that. How does it feel to have an RPG hero that actually knows how to talk to people? that actually knows diplomacy, and is actually smart. Keep in mind, Ash is a mage. You'll start seeing more and more in this universe that powers of healing come from, like, being a part of the priesthood and so on, but powers of magic, like offensive magic, are extremely rare in this universe. Ash actually has the ability to cast offensive magic. Ash is not a dumb character. I mean, we saw the... I mean, in Shining Force 2, we had the silent protagonist of Bowie. And Bowie was kind of, well... A silent protagonist, but also a little kid and not exactly smart. Um, Very naive is the way he was being played. Ash is not anywhere near as naive. Ash is actually a really good main character. Little brother, I'm sorry. Next day. Oh, damn. Like, there's glitches in the video recording, but the glitches in the video recording are because of the glitches in the game. All right, I'll take you. Thanks a lot. Thought about what you said, and you were right. Welcome to our party, Krog. Ship's dock just out of sight of town. Where the hell is my accent for Krog? <laughs> anyway, I believe this is the point where we can save? Yes. Um, right before I save, I'm gonna make sure Grog has items. I know I'm gonna need to at least buy an herb because I used one from, who used the herb? Diego used the herb.
Check out Grog. So Grog, for reference, is a swords person. Also only has a cure potion. Ugh. All right, let's go ahead and, well, I'll first show Grog, but we're gonna save an exit at this point. Uh, half an hour long videos. So Grog is a level nine soldier. Flint is a level eight soldier. So we're actually slightly below normal level now. Um, that's not actually true. So I think what's going on is that everybody joins at Ash's level. And technically, Kira joined at the start of battle, not at the end of battle, which is the reason why she's one level lower. So, yep. Anyway, let's go ahead and save and exit, because that's it for this video. Really short one. I talked for most of it. Battle itself probably lasted, what, five minutes? Ten? All right. I'll stop recording this, make a thumbnail, and start recording the next one. Bye, Internet.